On Second Shot, we tackle two new headlines every week to find out what kind of wisdom the world is dishing out today. And we want you to be a part of that. When you see a headline you want to take a second shot at, or if you're looking for advice, or just want to tell us what you think of the show, email us at secondshotcast at gmail.com. If you like what you hear, rate us on iTunes. This helps us move up in the ratings so more people will see us. And if you want to hear more, subscribe to the show so that the new episodes will get straight to you every single Friday. We love you. Thanks for listening and enjoy. Heath Oaks is a millennial mogul whose ignorance on fire led him to fail his way to success. Jenny Anchando is an Emmy award-winning journalist whose sharp eye and biting wit have led to her storied career in television. Together, they tackle today's headlines in a way only an odd couple with a dash of perfect opposite can. So kick back, relax, and join the conversation. This is Second Shot with your hosts, Heath and Jenny. Well, happy late 4th of July, everybody. How are you? Yes, happy 4th of July. I, I think that cel- holidays should be celebrated all week long, so oh, yeah? the fun continues. A lot of people will have, well, people who work normal jobs, and I don't know how many of our listeners work normal jobs, but they'll have off the holiday and then the day after, and then, you know, the weekend, so they'll make like a fun little four-day weekend out of it. Mm, we got a short little small crew, small but <laughs> mighty. We got Zach and, I mean... <laughs> uh, already... <laughs> Already messed up. The habit. Up. We got yeah. Matt and Jenny because Zach has left us because he, he's not cool enough to be here today. No, Zach. no. Ha. He's taking an extended vacation, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, sure. well, yeah, I mentioned those people with normal jobs <laughs> yeah. who take yeah. off yeah. the holiday, the day after, and the uh, weekend. Yeah. Here's looking at you, you know, Zach. You know what's one of the most fun about around July 4th for me? What? Is I can buy a lot of black cats and save them up to scare you and other people oh, for the rest of the year. That's not that's not what the Fourth of July yes, is it about. Is. There's nothing better than like <laughs> hiding when somebody sleeping and putting blackjacks under the bed and lighting them and like pop 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 them get woke up to Who it. Who does that? I do. Like in the house? In yes, the house? everywhere. Yeah. It's great. Were you a big okay. fireworks kid growing uh, up? I liked the I Roman was. candle wars. I liked shooting Roman candles okay. at my friends. So dumb stuff. And yeah. this is why yeah. fireworks are banned <laughs> in most parts of the United States. Now we know the rest of us who are just doing like those little screaming memes. Huh. I don't even know if those are what they're called. Like the rest of us who were just innocent sparkler holders yeah. can't use them because the heat oaks of we the would, world we were wrap having foil wars. around the sparklers and stuff oh and it gosh. made a bomb. Oh my gosh. When you wrap foil around sparklers and stuff oh. and a lot of them makes I a didn't bomb. Know that. Oh yeah. This it's is big. why we can't um, have nice things. Have you teaching ever, people things here. Yeah. Have you ever been hit with a Roman candle? Babe, no. Like I said, I was an innocent <laughs> sparkler holder. <laughs> Matt, have you ever been hit with a Roman candle? Uh, no, I've never been hit with a Roman candle. I, it's come close, though. I've definitely been on the receiving end Heath, of some have some you? Shots. Yes, we purposely oh, shot them at each other. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it was fun. People, do not do this. We had BB gun do wars. Do not. Oh, my gosh. This has gone off the rails. <laughs> This is not okay. People listen to this with their we children. We had nothing else to do. This is true. This is why yeah. you had to move to yeah. the city. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I just did the uh, the standard uh, put all my G.I. Joes on, on top of some dirt and blow them up and things like that. Firefighters that everywhere are cringing. They're like, here, these are the oh, people. Gosh, yeah. These are the people <laughs> who start all these fires. These are the people these that injuries. they warn you about. Yeah. <laughs> just uh, kids listening, don't do this at home. But Matt, look up the sparklers with foil. It's okay. Great all right. I'll, I'll get, take a look at that. Okay, you guys. So since Zach's off, I'm going to be doing our headlines for today. And the first one is a golf headline. And and you'll be thinking, okay, I'm not sure. Unless you're a really avid golf fan, you probably don't know this player. His name is Zach Sucker. So the headline is, Zach Sucker awesomely explained how second place finish at the PGA Tour event just changed his life. So he held the lead going into the third round of the Travelers Championship. he says, uh, this this writer says, I watch a ton of golf, and even I was like, who the heck is Zach Sucker? So after <laughs> doing some digging and then reading his post-tournament quotes about what it meant for him after finishing second in the PGA Tour event, I have a new golfer to root for because his story is pretty great. Um, that was my, that was weird. That was a weird connectivity of my phone's on silent, but my computer is on. Oh. So anyway, that's what's going on there. Let me turn down the volume. Um so, <laughs> I was wondering. I was like, "You got your phone off?" I know. Yeah. I turned my phone off, but I've got. So but I'm being super efficient here and having all my devices here for this headline. Mm-hmm. So, um, here's the deal: he had missed more than a year on the tour because of ankle and knee injuries. Um, this was after he missed 
11 out of 14 cuts in 2017. He had no money coming in. Um, things got tough. He spoke openly about having to take out credit cards. He ran up a, a ton of debt because he was continuing to pursue this dream of becoming a golfer. And he's he, he is a good golfer. He just wasn't winning anything. So... The debt is not a problem now because he bounced back from a rough third round and closed his final round with five birdies on the back nine to surge all the way to a tie for second place with a cool $633,000 payday. So, yes, he says, I don't know. It was like two months ago that we had credit card debt. So we don't have that anymore. So so the headline here is he's <laughs> taking yeah. this second place win as, oh, my goodness, I am, I mean, He's making something of this, right? If you ain't first, you're last, right? <laughs> unless Except, you're winning six hundred thirty-three. Yeah. Unless grand. you win six hundred thirty-three thousand. Yeah, that sounds like a win to me. Hey, I'll take tied for second all day long, yeah. right? Uh, I mean, there's so much inspiration and in everything in this story, and I, you know, one of the things that I took out of it as well is when he talked about it that um, that he and his wife and all them like you know went seven months with no money and that they're in credit card debt maxed out. Mm-hmm. Like you, you I, I get the feeling they were at their last like. Uh, that that if fork in the road, mm-hmm. that that something right and hits it big and and you know what I automatically came to my mind was was the fact of his wife and, and thinking what was she thinking where like couldn't didn't like he's trying to be a golfer right like who's all trying to be a golfer <laughs> yeah right like like think about it like it's one of those things that. Um, oh yeah, duh. <laughs> yeah, you want to be a golfer, right, and, but like, you're not oh, making yeah, any money. I be we're Michael in, Jordan. <laughs> we're in debt to our eyeballs. How many spouses will stick around and keep encouraging that it, to that point, right? Like, how many are going to be there going? That is uh, pushing it, which obviously she was, and obviously, but but it's always that that little um, end of the road thing. That's like, how do you know when it's time to go to cut right, your losses? This was fun, yeah. but I can't I can't do this anymore, and and when to keep pushing. We, did you know players are responsible for their own travel, food, and lodging, plus any arrangements they've worked out with their caddies? That, so, it, it, so not most. I mean, most of them are not because, well, they're understand they are. They're, they're just so sponsored. Much money. Yes. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, he was not a known yeah, most, entity. Most golfers make, you know, a million plus a year just on their sponsors. Not uh, including if they don't win the thing. So his wife was like, "Go ahead, let's keep trying." Yeah. And, and now he's probably now he's getting a more of a well-known name because of this story and this getting per second. So he'll probably get a couple sponsors. What I really like, and I think that's a great point about his, about his wife and his family and figuring out when are we going to cut our losses and transition into a different because that's path. a big dream to dream for to be a professional right. golfer. Well, yeah. And we don't know if his wife was working too. You know, she may yeah. have been kind of holding down the fort, you know, financially and things like that, and, and maybe not traveling with him like many of the mm-hmm. um, professional athlete wives do. Um, but when I I saw this, I thought it was interesting to think about how he is so honest. Mm-hmm. Instead of stepping into this and saying, "Yeah, that's right, I just got second place. Oh yeah, six hundred thirty-three thousand dollars." Because the rest of the world envisions if you're a professional golfer, you're you rich. are living the high yeah, life. So I really appreciate how he. Um, brings this himself and everybody else back to reality and saying, no, we have credit card debt. We opened up credit cards to finance this lifestyle. We didn't like doing it Um, because I think that so many of us do uh, aspire to have these so-called glamorous jobs and things like that and think, oh, that, you know, that's going to be really great. Again, you know, hearing, gosh, most golfers are millionaires. I want to do that. Well, he's being realistic with the public and not trying to put on airs and not trying just to get a like, kid that like oh my god I just find, I'm like get to eat <laughs> yes <laughs> yes yeah and it yeah. wasn't like he was saying oh we're gonna go buy all this stuff now because he's like no we're just gonna pay off this debt yeah. <laughs> and continue working and uh and continuing to hustle so I'm curious Heath in your you know business ventures and things that you've gone into over the years have you ever set a do you have like a, a rule of thumb for when to sort of cut your losses like okay i've spent and spent and spent um and this isn't working or i'll spend up to this point and if it hits and i keep going only when you don't believe in it anymore that's my biggest thing is like when if you lose belief stop because you're not going to make it Mm -hmm. like if you personally lose belief in what you're doing and what you're going for i say turn around because you're not going to make it unless you believe. You have to have that belief and faith in, in yourself and, w- and what that is. So I'm going to play devil's advocate on this because I, I, I like that. Um, don't we all have some sort of self-doubt from time to time? 
Yeah, but but here's the thing is like when I started in the insurance business, like here my thing was I, it's not like I loved the insurance business at first or anything sure, about sure, it. Sure, sure, sure. But I had a belief that I I had something more to do, and there was nothing else out there for like like okay. what was I going to go do? Go make minimum wage? Go do whatever? Go get a salary job? Not make any money hardly because I didn't have a degree, I didn't have the education. I knew that it was going to take something in my own hands to do. Okay. And I only had about one hundred and fifty dollars to get an insurance license, and that's what I did. So. Um, that was the belief. So it may not be the belief in that one thing, but you got to know that whatever that belief may be, if you, yeah, because look, if you lose all self confidence in yourself and you're trying to venture like golf, you're never going to make it. You'll never make it to the stage unless you learn to change your mindset and gain confidence in yourself because you're not going to get to that level without it. It makes me think. What kind of insane confidence is that? Yes. That you've been yeah. working for that many years and have not won, have not you know what what in you makes you think that you're you're going to win? And I love that he has. I mean, he he clearly has that his it factor. What? His it factor is yes, you're a good golfer, but the fact that he kept going because how many in his position would have stopped? It does make you wonder how much he had left in the tank, right? Mm-hmm. Like, is could this have been his last tournament, or was this his last year? That he was really going to pursue this or what i don't know if he's spoken publicly about that or not but um it, it does like you were saying earlier you know how long could they keep up this lifestyle and i also think it's probably a, a good example of um you know it's not the, that one thing out there is not going to solve all your problems i'm sure growing Amen. up or, or maybe you know you know as as he was coming up in the ranks he probably thought at some point well if i can just make it on the tour i'm set right i'm good um, and then at some point, reality hit him where it's it's not enough to just be on the tour. You have to actually then do something with that. And I've seen it, I've done it in my life, and I'm sure a lot of other people have, where they think if I could just get this one thing, if I could get this mm-hmm. one promotion, if I could get this one job, or if I could just do this one, accomplish this one thing, then I'm going to be set. And maybe to a degree you are, but there's follow up there. There's you have to, and and maybe it doesn't even solve the problem that you think it was going to solve, and it creates all new problems. Sometimes, right? sometimes it's not about creating or solving your problem as much as it is the looking forward to that next thing, right? right. Like it's like I want, like that, I need that one more thing, and that's what keeps me drum. See, like I'm I'm like that. It's like okay, that one more little level of money, that uh-huh. one more love or thing, and and when I get it, it, my whole life is not predicated on that, right? Like so, I've, I've found fulfillment in all parts of my life. So when I get to that one thing, and it's not what. I'm, I'm almost not even expecting it to be this most glorious life, whatever changes as much as it is. It's just that stepping stone you're to, counting to shoot it, for. You're celebrating the small victories yes. so yeah. is what I'm yeah. hearing you say. And that perhaps that's something he was doing behind the scenes. Absol- like, okay, I didn't win or I didn't make any money, but I did beat this person who I didn't beat last time. Or, you know, my I don't know the golf terminology. My, my stroke was better or, you know, I was closer to the green each time or something like that. No, he was at his wits. He was at his end. I mean, he was about – that's why he was ready to be there. I mean, he was – he was at that point of almost about to give up. And, and that's one thing that I know for sure that I've watched over and over. And for myself, I've watched it personally. Yeah. And, and for people like this is the greater the reward, the greater the, you know, the, greater the struggle, the greater the reward. Mm-hmm. So when you look at somebody like him and you think about his payday, they, he has given up a lot. I mean, you got to think about the emotional stress. Um, you know, your family that, that you've put everybody in debt. And it's like, how, you know, you feel like you're doing nothing but getting your, yeah. digging yourself and hanging deeper. out with a bunch of he's rich so com- people. Perpetually surrounded by people with money. Lots of Who have had tons of money and tons of success. And he was still hustling. Yeah, you've got you've to understand that it's like a lot of people want to come in and want these um, want, want all of these big things. But they're not willing to give anything up to get it. And they, they always see these people that do that but don't realize... Most of these people did not enter the golf world like Jordan Spieth, like like a household name, sure. tons of sponsors yeah. right off the bat made the tour. Okay, he Jordan didn't have to struggle on the tour. Yeah, he, he had money from the get go. Nothing against him. It's just he that's didn't. But, but most yeah, of these fine. people are like Zach here, mm-hmm. and I think that most all success stories in life are like Zach. You have to be willing to look at yourself and realize. If you want those big things, if you want those next things, are you willing to give things up for it? Are you willing to go through that struggle and understand that it's not anything against you? Everybody has to go through it. So you're not special enough to not have to. So you need to go through the struggle. That, that's, a delayed, that's a delayed payment on years of sacrifice. It and absolutely right. is. Yeah. And that, you got to put up first. That's part of the game. So we'll see you back in a minute on the second segment of Second Shot. up words she translates them keith and jenny host more of second shot coming up on rncn 
To all my friends in the great state of Texas, if you have not taken advantage, I have a way to save you a ton of money. I have saved over about $3,000 in the last year, and I have no hassle. Go to energyogre.com, put in the promo code Second Shot. Now listen, promo code Second Shot, and you're going to get a free month just for signing up and saving a ton of money. So don't be crazy. Stop sitting around talking about is this the real deal, and go do it right now. Energyogre.com, promo code Second Shot in a free month. Thanks. Go get it now. Run. Ready, aim, fire. Second shot is back for another round on RNCN. So is the tincture thing a millennial thing? Okay. I thought that was like a, oh, like a, that's like your mom generation thing. It's an older person's, th- it's, 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 well, it's actually ancient. It's like yeah. legit, I don't know, like Ayurvedic from, it's essential oils are not new. Yes, correct. Essentially, those are definitely not new. But I feel like it's sort of a millennial thing right now because it's become trendy and people are starting to learn more about it. And it, just like all things, just like scrunchies, they're back. Do you remember what scrunchies, babe? <laughs> no. Are, oh, wait, are scrunchies you know back? Scrunchies I didn't. Yeah, I know what scrunchies oh, are. I, I didn't know that they had come back. back. I guess I didn't know that they had gone out and then come back. <laughs> they, well, for some of us, like I have a couple favorite scrunchies. I have this one that's... Um, Oh, you talking about the hair things with yes. the colors? Yeah, because because you can put your hair back and do your makeup or get ready and not have a make a bend in your hair. This is a, an essential quality in a scrunchie, but now they're sort of trendy again. But they were big, like you know, in the eighties and nineties, yeah. and now they're back. I think essential oils. So we were talking in the break about how Heath and I. I don't know. I don't know why we call it this, but we call it tincture it up, and we <laughs> put um, our essential oils in our diffuser and put it there at night. And maybe you can hear a little bit of congestion in my voice. So we've been doing peppermint and then i put peppermint under my nose see i ain't putting yeah. it under my nose but it smells really all this those little oils coming from that stuff smells good going to sleep and thieves we've been working on our evening um meditation and tincture it up routine um and thieves oil which again is not like a new thing it's been marketed as such but it's an old blend that's known for um i hope i'm not saying essential oil experts let me know if i'm totally wrong in this but um basically cleaning fending off disease fending off infections things like that I'm not trying to say it's going to like save you from having to go to the doctor but it's a thing I feel, like is, it's, I feel like it's one of those things that on this next headline is what a lot of people order these <laughs> like under you know what i mean yeah what is thieves oil is that like a blend of it's something? a blend it's a blend and people use it to clean like a, a, we have it as like a floor cleaner cleaning solution um I, if somebody's getting sick you can use it as sort of an immune booster okay um you want to be careful because not all of them can be ingested or many of them cannot be ingested and you don't want to put it directly you in your skin. You clean your floors and drink it all at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a miracle. <laughs> Speaking of drinking, <laughs> Americans spend billions of dollars drunk shopping every year according to a new survey and we just had to bring this survey to the second shot listeners. Um, okay, so here's the deal. This article this article has been all over, by the way. For some reason, we chose the one from Maxim, so here it is. There you go. Um, if you have internet access and enjoy the occasional drink or three, then you may well have indulged in some drunk shopping. But who does it and who buys the most? Think Ruptor, a brand new magazine for tech entrepreneurs, created a slick infographic using data from an inaugural drunk shopping census to answer that burning question. Um, according to The Hustle, the e-tech letter that, uh, the tech e-letter that conducted the survey of about 2,000 alcohol consuming readers found that Drunk shopping is a $45 billion industry in the United States. So, what are people buying while <laughs> while they're tipsy? You must know. Well, I don't know um, if we want to know. Can it be no, said? No, it's, it's, more, it's more generic. <laughs> um, clothing, movies, that makes sense. I, both of those things, I mean, if I, yeah, I am not, not, I'm not saying that I'm guilty of this, but if I was, I'd probably close would be at the top of the list. Um, movies, games, tech, um, Oh, events like saying I'm gonna go to the J Lo concert. Like, oh, yeah. yes, let's do it. I can see that happening. Um, soft software is at the bottom. Yeah, nobody's trying to buy it. Like, <laughs> well, I think I need a new flash drive. <laughs> Feeling really crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would tech- think like kitchen gadgets or something like that would probably tech be. Tech gadgets. I, 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 I guess that gadgets. could be uh, that could be part of that. Yeah. I have a, a close girlfriend who now has been working on HSN as a sales, like an on camera, you know, an on camera sales person and she was saying their late night stuff gets crazy hits they do really well 
late into the I night. Bet. You know what I mean? Because yeah. maybe people have had a glass of wine or something. Oh, I used to think that Jenny. All she did was drunk shopping until I realized it was just normal that we have nothing but Amazon boxes daily at the house. Like, like I th- I'm telling you, if we have, if we have, if we four boxes a day minimum. Yeah, I know, I know the struggle. See, my my wife <laughs> works from real. home. She doesn't drunk shop, but I think she she like sleep shops. Like she wake up in the middle of the night and think yes. and think I want I want this or I want that. No. It's like, oh, I forgot. Like, we need tape for the, the yeah. moving project <laughs> yeah. or something. Yes, you totally wake up, and then you're all over Amazon Prime. Right. It. And so she works from home, so she catches all the packages. <laughs> so I, I'll just come home, and I'll see four open boxes. And I'm like, what was this? And she goes, oh, I just I just ordered a few things. It's never explained to me what it was. And it shouldn't it was be. Just, it was just, I ordered some stuff that we needed. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to trust you. Every now and then, I'll catch it, and it'll be like a dress, or it'll be something like else, and... Um, well, you know, she wants to look cute for you for date night, that's, and there's that's no fair. crime in that. That's fair. Look, I've never, I've never <laughs> accused her of anything. Or we'll have a new knife block that I didn't know we needed, or something like that. <laughs> Wouldn't you love to be on the hear those recordings of back in the day when you had to call just HSN or whatever, and with the late at night when somebody was getting something called to order and the drunk person, hey, I, I want, I want, I want some of blue blocker sunglasses. <laughs> oh, another hot tip: blue blocker sunglasses. I do have some of those, which I probably ordered on an on insomnia night. I've been working on my sleep routine. Yeah. I have been. Drunk shopping. I have not been drunk, drunk shopping. Shop, internet so, has made drunk shopping, and Amazon has made drunk shopping super easy. That's Before too easy. we get into the second shots on this, I do want to just clear the name of wine drinkers everywhere, because I think that people would assume that the number one you know, cho- you know, alcohol of choice while drunk shopping would be wine. Is that what you two would assume? Um, I I think I probably, so, and I, I don't know. I would have said is, that a hard liquor. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know if this is just my um, stereotypes coming out, but yeah, you would it's think stereotyping. You would We're think, stereotyping yeah. the rich. You guys are women. stereotyping. Yeah. Drinking so yeah, hang it, hang it we back, do it sober lounging. during the day, right? <laughs> on <laughs> the <laughs> clock while we're working and watching our kids. <laughs> this is a completely rational decision. No, <laughs> yes. no alcohol involved whatsoever. No. So it's thirty-seven percent of people are using liquor. 34 percent beer and 29 percent wine oh there you go oh yeah so the problem is go. is women are not the only ones drunk shopping right. men are too yeah right. it's true. guaranteed yeah those are the seven percent buying tech yeah <laughs> so what do you think about this in terms of a, a second shot well I, I like the whole thought on it that you had as well that just the influence in general around you know because um w- when you have influence around you whether that's a good influence or positive influence or whatever how it can truly affect your life, you know. And so, when you drink or, or and you're under the you know under the influence, right, of alcohol, you do things differently than you typically would do. When you're under the influence of people in your life that are not good for you, you're going to do things and get swept up in stuff you typically wouldn't do. Same goes for the opposite of how good it can be for your life if you're surrounded by people that are you're under the influence of in a positive way. Mm-hmm can do extraordinary things for your life would you agree a hundred percent yes absolutely and yeah yeah and i think we also you know even if somebody even if we don't mean for someone to be in our life we look at them and see them and we let them influence us Mm -hmm. i know this because i'm somebody who has to be cautious of myself doing it so i'm not saying oh all of you are doing this and i'm not Mm -hmm. i think we all um can do this and we let people influence us and we don't know the real story you know, behind whatever their experience is. So yeah, I, I think that this is just a good kind of take at, okay, yes, drunk shopping, ha ha. But also, what are we doing under the influence of others because other people are saying this? Now, I think that it works in the reverse as well. So um, people who, you know, if we're on a certain path, but we look at another one and it is more of a positive path, trying to be more influenced by those types of people. Mm-hmm. Listen to more of that kind of content. Read more of those types of books. Hang out with more of those people at lunchtime. Like, you know, when you're going go to, the, to those events that go you to those go, events. oh, I'm not going over and over. And yeah. go to them. Meet yeah. people. Um, even just, you know, in your following of people on social media or, you know, just your your daily circles. It can be like a virtual circle or it can be an in-person circle. Even with, like I try to be really intentional about the moms that I hang out with. And I love a mom that already has a couple of children because she's like mentor mom. Like she's yeah. been through it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, and she's got a couple kids and she's like, oh yeah, Jenny, you know, this this is how this works and this is how this works. And, and I, I love that because I can sort of be influenced by her in a positive way and have her 
help me through my struggles. So those aren't that doesn't just work with work. Well, and, and I think that when um, if you take a look around the things that that are influencing you, your family, your kid, and all that, it's like it's getting that changes because what influences you matters. And that's kind of that old thing Zig used to say. I ain't talked about Zig in a while, have you I? You haven't, no, babe. No. And I actually so, brought up a John Maxwell quote to really make it a Heath episode. Yeah, and uh, you just about yanked my headphones oh, off. Oh, sorry, sorry, babe. <laughs> I got excited about about I was going to bring you up were this. influencing my headphones. I was sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Bad influence. Yeah. So Zig always said, you know, what goes in your ears comes out your mouth, and and I think that's so true. I really do. I, I believe that who you're around and what you do, but but you've. Um, here's the thing. A lot of people will say you're looking for something special, right? Say you want to find that perfect mentor or something. You have to go put yourself out there and get around the influence of those people, which there are look, all of these things, networking events and mixers and stuff that all these people are like, oh, I'm not going to that. That's going to be boring. I, I'm, hey, those are weird. Well, that's what it's going to take. Mm-hmm. You, you, the, the person that you're wanting to meet and be influenced by is not going to just magically show up at your doorstep. Not going to happen. Right, right. They're, they're no. not looking to influence. They're, yeah. they're not looking to when you, when you look you at know, other work people, with people. When you look at other people and go, oh, look, they're surrounded by these people. I want to. Uh, they're lucky. They're surrounded by them. I want to be. Well, you have to get up off your butt and get out there and go have a chance to be influenced by them. They're not going to show up to your doorstep. Mm-hmm. Almost like we're just letting the, the easy things influence us. Yeah. Like, a, like an apathy with regard to who we're around. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, and it can be good or bad. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. So you tweeted this quote, and I just wanted to read it because I think it relates a little bit to this. It's um, by John Maxwell. It says most people are willing to grow only enough to accommodate their problems. Instead, they need to grow enough to achieve their potential. So it's like I, I'm just gonna. I think you know, making enough money is like the simple way of explaining it, or the way that I heard this initially. Like, oh, I just need to make enough to um, just pay the bills or whatever. But like, what if you just totally blew it out and you were able to help a ton of people and really donate to that charity you wanted to, or really, you right. know, um, start you, an international charity. Start, whatever. Yes, like any of those things. So I thought that was good, and in, in, in the vein of being influenced by people, I want to be influenced by that quote and and really hear that and feel that. Well, and I think it's very important to understand, too, that if the people you want to be influenced by aren't real enough to understand and, and be honest about all the stuff there is, like I, I, I tweeted another one the other day that said, of course I struggle. I just didn't quit. Because all of us struggle. All of us go through our, 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 our highs and lows in life, and all of us are going to go through our ups and downs with it. But luckily for, I know for like me and, and my wife, for instance, we're in, we have positive influences around us that when those happen we can help pick us up and i pray for that for other people too yeah definitely. That, that you've got but but you know what that didn't just happen because we woke up and we had good people around us you have to get off your butt and get out there and make friends people in areas and in spots and things that are essential to you and what you're looking for you have to make an effort it just doesn't happen we'll be back in a minute on the third segment of second shot That's what I call ignorance on fire. More of Heath and Jenny still to come. You guys have been listening to Second Shot and hearing us talk about it. You need to go pick up my book, Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. You can get it on Amazon in a paper book. You can also hear this beautiful voice of mine in audiobook style on Audible or anywhere you're going to get your audiobooks. Guys, this book took a lot of time to put into it, and I believe it can really be some life-changing stuff to help you on your path to success. And hopefully you're going to fail your way to success just like I did. Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. Amazon.com, Audible.com, audiobooks, paper books, everything. Get it, share with your people and i appreciate it thank you guys go pick it up today kick off your boots or suit up the choice is yours welcome back to second shot on rncn <laughs> even before we get that i just feel sorry for everybody in society at this moment why well, because my wife is mad about some stuff and agitated, and she is about to Uh-oh. let them have it, and I, yeah, they can feel the lot, the, the wrath of of you on everybody. It's like stop telling me, tell everybody else. A whole string of black cats about to go off in the <laughs> studio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, when somebody's asleep, just put them next to him I and light them. It's great. Is, does anyone terrifying. have a place I can stay? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody wanting to sublet just, their apartment? I'm, I'm waiting for Brighton to just get a little bit older before uh, I really start oh getting hurt. No. Okay, so here's... so, And I, I'm not a big person that has beef with people in general. Right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Crickets. Okay, maybe, okay, maybe yeah. I am. Just kidding. I, I can't. I wish joking. Zach was here because Zach would be like, Jenny, you're so nice. I'm joking. I love you. I'm joking. <laughs> um, well, at least I'm not like a public, you know, oh, yes. this annoys you don't, me. You don't or, gripe about stuff. I don't, right. I'm not like a griper. You're not. So here's the thing. We are in the new sort of digital age of people having, you know, realizing that social media and getting their brand out there is how you get your, that, that's how you get attention and everything like that. It's like what TV news was, you know, and, ha- and, and, ha- and still is to a certain extent mm-hmm. in terms of getting the word out there. So we have been getting a decent amount of people emailing us, reaching out to us, sending direct messages, saying, hey, um, I've got a band. I want to be on your show. Hey, I've got a, a business. I want to be on your show. Mm-hmm. This one um, just said feature. Hi, and I'm not going to read this person's name because the point is not to call somebody out. It's to, to do some educating here if you're trying to get your brand out there. Hi, my name is blank. My wife and I own you know this certain business. It is wonderful. We think that you should have us on. We would like to be on your podcast. <laughs> that was the whole email. Okay. So, okay, so I'm like, okay. It sounds like this person has never actually listened to our podcast. Right. And so so here's the here's the thing. When you're doing a media pitch and I only say this because I've worked in media for so long and dealt with so many different pitches and I'm not saying you have to hire a big PR company because a lot of people do it very successfully on their own. Of course a PR company will, you know, send the email for you and have it perfectly crafted. But if you're going at it alone, I totally get that especially for a small business until you build up. Um, it's it's common sense to know the product you are pitching your item for. Yes. You also have to add value. So if you you're, have to you, add you value. You have to add value because otherwise that's an advertisement. And guess what? People pay for advertisements. Yes. People pay a lot of money for advertisements, and that is fine. And every, you know, all podcasts are open to doing that. But when we have a guest come on the show, we want them to bring value. We want them to bring value. We want them to teach. The last couple of weeks, we had an operation organization. She was giving step by step how to work through your email. She wasn't coming on there and just saying, "Hey, you should hire me," because saying that doesn't work. The only thing that works gets you hired is showing what you can do you have to tell people what you can do so when we're getting these pitches i feel for these companies and i'll often write back with a suggestion but it's like hey we're, you know even if you came back to me down the road it, it's it's obvious that you're not trying to help the audience you're not trying to help us you're not trying to collaborate you just want to advertise you just want to use our platform and our listeners and our viewers are worth more than that like we're not we, we don't want to waste anybody's time we want when people come here to get something of value and so if you're going to bring something to the table and up, up level you know what all of us are are thinking about and learning then great Let's say there's some people out there right now that are listening that that give give some of the most com- let's think about like two of the common most common businesses that maybe you could help give what a pitch could look like to mm-hmm. something maybe it's an influencer they're wanting to meet or want to share their stuff or or or, okay. or, or it's a podcast right let's just say they have a um, um, let's take a, they um, have glasses. They're they've made their own stone glasses, like um, like Marisol, right? Oh, like Marisol, so, our friend. Oh my gosh, you guys have got to follow. This is not paid. <laughs> yeah. um, well, it's A S T A L. Wait, A S T A L U N A Creations. Yeah. Anyway, I, you'll see, I've tagged. So her if it's stuff. somebody that's like her, that's having her thing, how? Okay. So what would be a pitch different than like this person? Yes, than that, just that's saying I want deal. you to be on. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so you've you've created the, these glasses. They're handmade. You want to think about who would actually use these? Who in the influencer space or in the podcast space or in the news space would actually use these glasses? Well, so that eliminates some people. So you know, some people are not twenty one, or some people are you know they're more like homebodies. Who who is really into decor? Who posts a lot about? you know, their beautiful home set up and liking to entertain, who is out a lot with their girlfriends, who is really big on setting up a, a beautiful dinner for their husband or wife. Um, those are the people you target. Then you say, I noticed this on your feed and I noticed these beautiful glasses and you like to drink Vuv and oh my gosh, how how cool is that? I do too. I created these glasses. I'd love to send you some. So it, no strings attached. Just right. sending them. I'd like to send you some 
end <laughs> end of story um if you really want it, it could because because you've targeted someone who you think will really like those glasses and then they may come come back to you and say oh gosh these are really cool i'm having this you know this uh, this actually happened with marisol yeah um, there was there was an open house coming up yep and she was going, you know, somebody invited her to come display her artwork at the open house to like-minded individuals. I think what's happening is people are just kind of throwing a bunch of things against the wall because they know they need um, media influencers and they know they need attention in the media or on a podcast platform, but they're not um, taking the time to really think about what's going to be worth me sending something to them or what's and here's be a, worth me trying to partner with them. Marisol's friends of ours and she has never once asked us to talk about her business Right. At all. Never right. asked us to post for anything. Never asked anything, right? Right. And as friends, but, but we you bought do. from her. But yeah. she also gifted me some or, but yeah, around my I birthday. Mean, and yeah. So that's the thing is that you got to put it up. So let's just say, too, it's like um, here's another good instance, I think, for a pitch of getting used is these, let's say, a food truck or something, right? These people have a restaurant. They have a bakery. They have food trucks or I mean, whatever. If you have a food truck, we will talk about you. Yeah, let's, Why don't you, you offer to come cater something for free for, for them? You know, mm-hmm. like, hey, let me bring lunch for one of your episodes. Let me bring da 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 Do something like that, and people are more inclined to do it. You can't just ask people, hey, I want to be on your show. Hey, can <laughs> you post about this for me? Yeah. I'm going to say one more thing in terms of adding value. So say you have a clothing line. Um Here's another way to add value. Um, you could just offer to go in and say, hey, and again, like our podcast might not be the right space for this, but maybe there's a fashion industry podcast. Instead of saying, I want to tell you about my line, how about I am an expert in the fashion business and I would like to talk about all fall trends. You can use your own line. You can use other people's lines. You mm-hmm. can use, you know, because you're establishing yourself as the expert. Instead of just saying, look at my clothes, you're saying, I want to talk about fall trends and what you can do to get the kids ready for back to school and uh, to update your fall wardrobe for work so that you're adding value. So people are actually learning from you. As a byproduct, they're probably going to like you and see your stuff and, and want to buy it if yep. it's good. It's just so lazy and like you know how many people have asked like to be on the show or they're like there, there have been food been, ones that have been like oh, oh we can uh I, well uh, i can call in and be on your show and i'm like have you ever listened to our show yeah. obviously not because do we, we've never we do done call that. so although i'm trying to get myself to be a call-in <laughs> next week but i mean it's just that, that's the most annoying stuff to me yeah. it, and it's like don't it's and we, lazy. We it's love lazy. the people who are who are. If you are, and we know if you're following the show and then pitching. Yeah, we we you can love tell. that. But if you know the style of the show, unless you have sort of an inspirational story or something motivational or something tactile for the you know for our audience, then it's not going to make sense. So I hope that that was at least helpful. If I think you are so. trying to I, get your stuff out there, yeah, and, and I think I think people have. Um, you know, I think people learned this a little bit as time went on with with the news media. Although certainly not perfectly. I mean, I've I've probably told this story before on this on this show, but in my previous life, I was a producer for mm-hmm. a political talk show, uh, Afternoon Drive, so one of the big time slots in radio, and uh, we would get pitches for things like I'm not gonna. You know, I, I won't say it was specifically them, but say we would get pitches for Grapevine Wine Fest or something like that. And it's like we're never going to do that segment because that's not what we do. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you if you take a minute to listen to the show, you would know that like we don't do segments on doing a wine tour um, because it, that doesn't fall into to our line. Um, but I think people have lost this a little bit with with the increase in podcasting because it just feels so casual. It feels so. Like, oh, it doesn't matter. You know, we right, like, just, oh, come on my show. We'll come on yours. Yeah, whatever. No, like, we have a really good following, and we don't want to mess that up by right. bringing on people that are not serving them. And you and you know what? You may be successful uh, for some shows by just sending a bunch of stuff out. And, you know, but the ones that really matter are going to treat you the exact same way as you would have been treated if you were approaching a professional organization, which is to say, do your homework, know what you're looking into. And then, yeah, a little bit like our first conversation about um, about the golfer. You got to put up first. Yep. You got to, mm-hmm. you know, it's not, it's not a matter of giving me something, but you have to prove your worth. You, you, right? you have vine, to prove. Yeah. Wine festival should just show up to your show with y'all a whole bunch of wine, giving y'all wine. It, it could, there, there could have been something there, perhaps. But perhaps still, it wasn't the right, like, but it wasn't the right episode. But I mean, like that, yeah. instead of just that pitch, it's like, do that. You right. guys that, can that, that can make wine. more of a, 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 a <laughs> make more of a uh, statement than anything else, you know? Right. No. Yeah, I think just you know knowing your brand and knowing who you're after, and not everybody's for you, and that's that's okay. Don't just throw stuff against right. the wall. We it feels self-serving giveaway. to say that podcasting is serious business, but it is now. You yeah, know, yeah. You, you, yeah. you know, and we take it seriously here. So yeah, if you're just speaking about us, if you're approaching us, 
do your homework. You know, treat it like you would anything else. You better bring it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's so not me. <laughs> but um, yes, we had giveaways. Yep, the last couple weeks. So. Um, Miranda Kirk coaching did a giveaway for a session. I wow. obviously, you know, she did, couldn't tell me how it went because it's a, you know, confidential coaching session, but she said that it did go really well. So if it was you that got the coaching session, send I would us love an email. Let us know if you liked it. Yeah, hear how it went. Second shot cast at gmail.com. And then we did Heath's book giveaway and we got so many um, entries. By the way, all these giveaways are happening on the Second Shot Podcast Instagram page if you want to follow along. We don't post a lot, but we do do show updates and giveaways. So, at just just instagram.com slash second shot podcast so we were going to give away three books which i did um as a surprise to Heath. he came on one day and i was like i'm giving, giving away some of your books <laughs> then we got so many entries that i gave away five so those um should be arriving to all of you shortly i did like what y'all said on the uh, on the live um a while back when it was like hey if you're so interested in this book why don't you just go buy, <laughs> buy it? it's not that expensive like come on folks it's like 13 dollars yeah. on yeah. amazon <laughs> and it's really good or you can do the audio version i think a lot of people are so busy so they like to do the audio version but if you've got a trip coming up or something yeah. and have some reading time the book is called ignorance on fire a journey of failing your way to success um, by my husband he and jokes. i would like to thank you hon for all the work you've done with the podcast you're like constantly doing all the cool stuff and like on top of it Thanks, all and babe. putting everything other putting the contest and i never did any of that at all and i'm so glad that you decided to say yes and come on the podcast full time be like us doing it like Thank because you. i i am not near as good at any of that stuff and you are and you do great at it thank you well like we said you know if we're going to do something we want to take it seriously and serve our people and and just have it be legit mm. I hope you all get black cats and scare the <laughs> heck out of your partners. <laughs> and I hope nobody gets no. shot with Roman candles. <laughs> okay, everybody, you can find me hiding under the bed or <laughs> at JennyAndChondo.com, Jenny and Chondo on Facebook and on Instagram. And um, you can join the Second Shot Facebook group, by the way, too, and we talk about our giveaways in there. Uh, you can find me Matt Stoker one on Instagram and in the Facebook group, and uh, I don't know, maybe I'll post some videos of blowing some stuff up with fireworks. It sounds Boom. like the time. Can't wait. That'll be great. <laughs> at Heath Oaks at Ignorance on Fire, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of those good stuff. We'll see you next time. I love y'all. Bye.